Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 28. This is Saul's encounter with the witch of Endor. And let's read it. Today we're going to look at verses 12 through 14. He's already gone. He put all the spiritists out of the land, but oh, guess not all of them. He finds the one. He goes to her. God isn't answering him, so he's going to talk to the under, you know, the dark side. And we pick it up at verse 12. When the woman saw Samuel, because Saul asked her to bring up Samuel from the dead. We'll talk about this. Here's verse 12. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. So he said to her, What is his form? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed down. Now we're going to Stop right there. It's hard to stop, isn't it? But just let's put a couple things in front of us. Okay, number one, man is not naturally immortal. Man does not have an immortal soul. Immortality is a gift. 1 Corinthians 15, God gives the gift of immortality. Man does not have a soul. Man is a soul. Genesis 2, verse 7, God took the dust of the ground and he took the breath of life from God and he put them together and man became, King James Version says, a living soul. A living being, New King James. You have to have the breath and the and the dust, the material component and the, and the spiritual component, you have to have those together to have a living soul. We are souls. I'm a soul. You can touch a soul. A soul has a body. A soul is not separate. That's a Greek myth. I know it got impregnated into Christianity in the early centuries. It's not what the Bible teaches. Man is a unity. Man does not have. So there's no immortal. You can't call up Samuel immortal soul or Samuel's spirit to talk to you because with without, without the dust of the ground and the breath of life, there is no Samuel. There is no spirit. We're, we're separated uh, until the day of resurrection, you see. So when Saul goes to this woman, this medium, and he says, bring up Samuel for me, I'm not saying there won't be some manifestation of something that's going to come up. Uh, we'll see that tomorrow morning, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be Samuel. Because God's not answering him. Anyway, we'll get to that tomorrow morning. The thing we're looking at here today is this woman was deceived. And then she realized when this, she did come into contact with a demonic spirit, a fallen angel from, from heaven, fallen angel. The fallen angel alerted her that, oh, yes, this is Saul. He's right here in your, in your house, in this room. And she says, look, look, you're actually Saul. You're deceiving me. And he says, don't worry about that. Just let me, you know, answer my questions. Uh, what does he look like? And then notice what uh, it says. She describes this old man coming up. And then, by the way, do you think that when we are re when we're resurrected, we're going to come up as old men and old women? Are we going to come up if, if you went into the ground with a missing half of your leg? Are you going to come up with uh, still missing a half of a leg? I don't think so. We're going to have glorified bodies. So uh, yeah, that's 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 not the way it's going to be. And notice what this says here. She described it to him, and then it says fourteen. Saul perceived that it was Samuel. So Saul heard the explanation, and then Saul, in his own mind, uh, figured out, it, in his mind, he thought, oh, this, this is Samuel. He, she did successfully bring him up from the dead. Now, we'll, we'll have reason to believe, as we look on tomorrow, as we carry on with our story here, we'll have full reason to believe this is not Samuel. This is a fallen spirit. This is a demonic spirit. Uh, who's there to deceive Saul, who's opened himself wide open to uh, deception. But I just want you to notice this. It's not that the Bible tells us that this is Samuel. It's that from the perspective of these participants in this event, they're thinking that it's Samuel. And we see in verse 14 that Saul, Saul calculated, Saul reasoned, and Saul, after taking the bait here, Saul says, oh, I am now confronted to Samuel has been brought up from the dead. And now I'm going to talk to dead Samuel and get some, what's he going to get from dead Samuel? Anyway, we'll save that for tomorrow. Uh, what, what, uh, what lessons may be for us here? Be kind of careful what you do because there are supernatural forces. There are fallen angels. There are demons in our world. We don't want to put a big emphasis there. We don't want to uh, cower under the rock all day long and be afraid of fallen spirits. Jesus is stronger than any fallen spirit. God, God is stronger than any creature like that. But what I want you to know is that there are things we don't dabble in. We just don't go to there. And, and now Saul, in his despair and apartness from God, Saul has gone exactly to do the very wrong thing. And now he's Saul is playing a battle of intellect with fallen angels. And you and I don't want to do that because we will lose.
We're not smart, as smart as an angelic being. Bad news all around. What can we learn from this? Don't ever go there. Don't put yourself in that situation where you're self-destructing before our eyes as Saul is. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you are a good God. You're ready to guide us and be our guide. You don't want to leave our side. You don't want us to leave your side. And here's a case in the Bible where we see what happens when one is determined to leave your side and do it his own way. So, Lord, may we learn from the negative example of Saul never to go this way and always to have our heart open heavenward to you in your kingdom. We pray, Lord, that this be our prayer to you and our request. In the name of Jesus, amen. Friend, may God himself be with you today and put his blessings upon you. May we never experience anything like this. See you.